Welcome. This is Auditing 304. Today we're starting with session one, overview of auditing. The objective of an audit is to add credibility to the information contained in financial statements. This session therefore seeks to introduce students to the nature and purpose of auditing, classifications of audits and auditors, and strategies for auditing. By the end of this session, students will be able to define and explain the meaning of auditing, understand the audit process, identify the various classifications of audit and auditors, identify and explain audit engagement, that is assurance and non-assurance, and further explain various audit strategies. This session is outlined as follows. We're going to talk about origin of audit, nature and scope of auditing, features of auditing, and so forth. Pay attention and be sure to read wide following these. Chapter 1 of BEDI 209, Auditing and Assurance Services in Ghana, and the slides that will be sent to you through Sakai. Other auditing and assurance textbooks available to you as a student. Can go online and Google and get more information about this course. And I'm sure you will find a lot to read. Okay, origin of audit. Audit is derived from the Latin term audi, meaning to hear. In the olden days, people were often appointed to hear verbal transactions repaired to help detect fraud to safeguard the properties of owners. But in these modern times, auditing develops since the concept of separate legal entity, that is, Owners who are, the, who, who are the owners of the various entities are very much separated from its own organization and therefore others are appointed to manage. So auditing came in to link the situation between owners and managers to deal with any fraud issues and to make the work and report of managers credible. To safeguard the interest of owners, that is why auditing has been introduced. Now let's try to understand what auditing is. We are going to basically deal with the meaning and scope of auditing basing our whole concept on the definition by American Accounting Association. D to them is a systematic process of objectively obtaining and evaluating evidence regarding assertions about economic actions and events to ascertain the degree of correspondence between those assertions and established criteria and communicating the results to interested parties. Following this definition very well, you clearly see that it's a scientific process. Auditing can only be done when there is a standard, a criteria, and the report that is a financial statement that managers have issued are making certain assertions about the entity they manage. So it is the work of the auditor to gather evidence around these assertions, compare it to a set criteria, for example, IFRS as a standard, how financial statement is supposed to be prepared. And then auditors are supposed to use the various evidence they have gathered as against that criteria and communicate an opinion thereof so that users will use such report as a credibility on the financial statement. So this is the main definition we are going to work on and this particular course, Auditing 304, is mainly on financial statement audit. Now what are the features of audit? auditing? First, I, they say that it's a systematic and, and scientific examination of books of accounts of a business. Audit is undertaken by an independent person or body of person who are duly qualified for the job. Audit is also a critical review of the system of accounting and internal control. Audit is done with the help of vouchers, documents, information, and explanation received from the authorities, which later on we are going to know it as what? Management representations. The auditor has to satisfy himself with the authenticity of the financial statement and report that they exhibit a true and fair view of the state of affairs of the concern or the entity involved. Now, is auditing important at all? If yes, let's look at some of the objectives of auditing. We're saying that it increases the credibility of the information or matter being reported. As management prepares the financial statement and reports it, owners can doubt. They may have issues, but auditors as a third hand comes in 
to watch or go through various processes to ascertain what has been done by management, compare it to criteria, and issue a report thereon. Based on, based on this, users will then trust the report that has been issued by management, which is the financial statement. Auditing also reduces conflict between opposing factions, owners, that is shareholders, and management. Reduces fraud, facilitates the work of government, especially Ghana Revenue Authority, tax purposes. Organizations prepare the accounts. What shows that the true reflection is what has been prepared? Auditing comes in to help in this state. When organizations want to go through liquidations, auditing comes up. So auditing is important for several reasons. Let's now turn our attention to the process of auditing, the stages auditing goes through, the phases of auditing. Basically, we have grouped the phases into six. The first phase is client and engagement acceptance. The audit firm needs to have a client and have engagement to work with, a job. After attaining this engagement, all the necessary contracts have been signed. They plan their audit. They plan what they are going to do, the whole purpose of it, and how they are going to conduct the activities of auditing. The third phase is that they have to go in there, gather evidence about their sessions. After gathering the evidence, that's not all. You have to review and evaluate the evidence, whether they are appropriate, whether they are sufficient to help you come up with an opinion, a report to interested parties. When all this is done, the fifth phase is that the auditor can now go ahead and issue a report. That is an opinion on what has been done or opinion on the assertions management have made. The final phase, which is the C phase, is continuing issue. When you look at this situation, you realize that it's a cyclical thing. When you're still having a client, it means that the next year you're going to have it as another engagement to perform. So after issuing your report, there are other things the auditor has to pay attention to before the next possible audit. Good. I'm sure by now you are having questions which I will entreat you to search through other manuals online and read more and also the recommended text as well. Now, what is this engagement? What is this auditor's work? The service auditors provide has been grouped into two main, assurance and non-assurance. Audit services falls part of the assurance which we are going to know more about very soon. What is assurance? Assurance services are independent professional services that improve the quality of information or its context for decision makers. So what are we saying here? Any possible thing that is done to improve the quality of an information for users' attention, to benefit users for decision purposes, we are calling it assurance. But be careful. There are five main things, anything that can be described as an assurance should meet. The first thing is there should be a three-party relationship involving a practitioner. Here we are referring to the auditor, a responsible party, and intended users. The responsible party being the one we are auditing, the entity, the management here, and then the intended users are the possible users of the financial statement and the audit report thereof. So here, a good example can be shareholders and any other interested parties, like other stakeholders like government. The second thing that should be looked at is an appropriate subject matter. The auditor cannot go out there auditing without a purpose, without a focus. So there should be an appropriate subject matter. Sufficient appropriate evidence. For the auditor to come out with his or opinion, evidence needs to be gathered. A suitable criteria is also needed as a fourth point. That is, after gathering the evidence, what are you measuring the evidence against? What is your criteria? What is the standard? That is a suitable criteria needed. A written assurance report in the form of appropriate to a reasonable assurance engagement or a limited assurance engagement is also done. That is, at the end of that, a report must be issued. When all these five key points come to play, then what is being done is an assurance service that is seeking to improve the quality of information. There are several examples, and I entreat you to read on. Attestation. Realize that we, under assurance, we have attestation. We are saying that attestation occurs when a practitioner is engaged to issue or does issue a written communication that expresses a conclusion about the reliability of a written assertion. That is the responsibility of another party. So in simple terms, as attestation can be said that you are trying to assure or being a witness to something to another person. 
In all this, we put it in this oval shape that assurance is broader. In assurance, there is attestation, and in attestation is what? Auditing. But our focus per this course is auditing. What then is non assurance? Because we said auditing, that the, the service auditors provide comes in two parts assurance and non assurance. In simple terms, we would define non assurance as any engagement that lacks the five elements of assurance engagement. So look around. Any engagement that you go through that do not have this three party, that does not have a criteria for measurement, that does not have a focus, will not fit in as what? An assurance service, but rather will be a non assurance service. Now we've known more about auditing, what auditing is, the features of auditing, the objectives of auditing, assurance services and non assurance services. Now let's try and turn attention to some types of audits. The one we are mainly taking note in this course is financial statement audits, which is basically an audit whose objective is to express an opinion on whether the financial statement presents fairly in all respects the financial position results of operations. So here we are more moving towards the external audit. We have other types of audit, the compliance audit and appraisal of the extent to which organizational objectives are met. I hope you are following it. So we've talked about financial statement audit, compliance audit as the second one. The third is operational or value for money audit. This kind of audit is not just about the accounting and financial matters, but also with overall goal, achievement, effectiveness of operation procedures, and internal controls performance of individual managers and other non-financial aspects of their organization. So value for money audit goes beyond just the financial statement audit and is looking for the overall goal achievement of the entity. Forensic audit. This is a specialized area of auditing, which is concerned with solving commercial crimes. Forensic auditors are often required to testify in court regarding the evidence they have gathered. The fourth you may want to mention is environmental audit. I believe by now you are asking, auditing is in various areas, yes. Everything that needs to be assured, auditing comes in. So the next is what our environmental audit, which a process that assesses the organization's compliance with environmental laws, policies, and standards. Internal audit, which is very close to the external audit, just that here, internal audit are internal employees of an organization, even though in recent times they can be assaults. What is it? We see a process that seeks to measure the effectiveness and efficiency of an organization's controls over financial accounting and other operations. We have other kind of audits, public sector audits, social audit, tax audit, and so on and so forth. So go ahead, gather more books on auditing online and read more to get these various types of audit. Now we've been able to know the various types of audit. It is also very important to know if there are classifications of what? Auditors. Yes, we have three main classifications, auditors in business, auditors in practice, auditors in academia. Auditors in business, who are they and what, they, what are they, to be specific? Say that they are solely or jointly responsible for the preparation and reporting of financial and other information. So what is it? They are mainly employees of a, a certain organization. For example, I can work for University of Ghana as an auditor. So here I'm an audit, audit in business. I can work for any private organization as an auditor. So what qualifies me here is what auditor in business. Auditors in practice. Here they are not working for any particular entity as employee, but they have a firm, audit firm, and their job is to go about auditing other entities. So they are the professional accountants who undertake external audits and other services on behalf of clients. They, are, they usually operate through accounting firms. The last one is auditors in academia. They are persons lecturing and undertaking research in auditing and assurance services. Now let's turn our attention to audit strategies. Auditors use several strategies in, in conducting or going about their work. We have the substantive approach, the systems approach, the audit risk approach, balance sheet approach, business risk approach, the directional approach. I will entreat you to read more about these 
various approaches. For the auditor to go about his work, these other strategies are geared towards ascertaining the assertions being made by the financial statement. So in the financial statement prepared by management, management is making certain assertions. And mainly we have seven assertions, and we simply call it the cover MP to help us to remember. That is completeness, occurrence, valuation, existence, right and obligations, measurement, and presentation and disclosure. To remember this, just use the cover MP. Okay, we've managed to go through the first part, the first session, which is overview of auditing. Feel free to contact me on Sakai for any session, and then we will gladly discuss it. Don't forget, consult books to read more, especially the recommended texts. Have a good day.